Commander of the Iranian Army's Ground Force Brigadier General Khaimur Zhudari says his force has taken delivery of a sophisticated and smart air defense system, developed and manufactured by the country's military experts and technicians. Hidari made the remarks in an exclusive interview with Fars News Agency on Monday, stressing that it is absolutely essential that the ground force units acquire state-of-the-art armaments in order to enhance their efficiency and be capable of responding to present-day operational needs. He went on to highlight that the Iranian army's ground force has already submitted three grandiose plans, dubbed Labak Allegiance 1, 2 and 3, to the commander-in-chief of the Iranian Armed Forces Ayatollah Said Ali Khamenei. The first plan, called Labak 1, is aimed at redesigning the structure and mobilization of the armed forces and enabling them to impose their military might on the enemy in close-range ground battles. The senior Iranian commander highlighted that formation of mobile offensive and quick reaction units was among the objectives defined for Labak 1 plan, stating that efforts are still underway to formulate the cyber, missile and drone aspects of the plan in proportion to modern operational needs. Hidari underscored that Labak 2 plan particularly focuses on arming the Iranian army's ground force with munitions, which meet the four features of being long-range, precision strike and smart, and enjoy the ease of network connectivity. He said the homegrown weapons being developed under the plan should be able to strike the minimum operational depths of enemy's forces, which Iran has set at 300 kilometers, enjoy precision strike capabilities, since future wars would take in effectiveness, rather than destruction, be smart, so that they would devastate a strategic target once fired, and effortlessly connect to the intended network. Hidari added that the Iranian army's ground force has received the first smart air defense system, which possesses advanced technological capabilities. Our drone unit has been established with several very extensive regional bases he said, noting that all of Iranian-developed unmanned aerial vehicles are sophisticated, smart and precision-guided. The commander of the Iranian Army's ground force also said the work on optimization of the 155mm artillery units has been completed and efforts are underway to upgrade other units. Hidari said Labak 3 plan focuses on engineering matters, namely construction of barracks, medical facilities and institutional buildings. Iranian military experts and engineers have in recent years made remarkable breakthroughs in manufacturing a broad range of indigenous equipment, making the armed forces self-sufficient. Iranian officials have repeatedly underscored that the country will not hesitate to strengthen its military capabilities, including its missile power, which are entirely meant for defense, and that Iran's defense capabilities will be never subject to negotiations. Ayatollah Khomeini has repeatedly called for efforts to maintain and boost Iran's defense capabilities, decrying enemies for questioning the country's missile program. This is not the first time that Iran has transferred its missile technology to overseas customers. Since the 1980s the country has had a bilateral relationship with North Korea, where technology has at some points flowed in both directions. It has also provided missiles to Hezbollah in Lebanon, and more recently to Houthi rebels in Yemen. But, despite a long history of political and commercial relations with Tehran Russia is a new market for Iranian missile technology, and an unusual one given Russia's vast military-industrial complex. But the conflict in Ukraine has continually challenged orthodox views of Russia's perceived capabilities on the battlefield and in its weapons factories. In seeking Iran's support, Russia is likely trying to replenish stocks of missiles expended so far during the conflict, with patterns of weapons use, suggesting that its arsenal may be depleted in certain areas.
it is also trying to offset some of the challenges faced by the Russian defense industrial complex's efforts to replenish stocks. Russia's weapons manufacturers are stretched to the limit by efforts to restock. The country also faces a wide-ranging arms embargo, which for many Western states including the EU, dates back to the 2014 seizure of Crimea or before, and restrictions on the acquisition of dual-use technologies tightened in February this year.